Welcome to Hanging Out with Robert, that's me. This video contains things that I tinker with throughout the day. For step-by-step -step detailed instructions of those tasks, you can click on the link in the comment section below. I plan on leaving this video accessible for about 30 days. After that, you can view it through my Patreon account. This video also has tips and tricks that I've learned over the years. So, thank you very much for watching. Today's quick tip is for the P80 2.0 cars. SV70, C70s, these vehicles with this hood release right here. When you open the hood, you put your hand under the front of the hood and you squeeze this plastic that pushes up on the rod and releases your hood. These things are breaking at an alarming rate. As you can see, this one here is broken. If you don't get this fixed and replaced with a new one, you're going to have problems on your hands getting this hood open. This one, I actually thought it was broken, but it wasn't. It clipped back in. So when these things are loose, you come in here, you poke that little part right there, pull that in toward the back of the car, slide this up, do that on both sides, and this thing will come right out. But what you're going to be doing is putting in a new one. So when you get the hook set like that, the rod down in there, you just come up here and you slide these things on and snap them in place. I thought this one was broke. It wasn't. It was just unlatched. I latched it back. It's good to go, but more than likely it's fragile and brittle. As you can see, it lifts the rod up to release the hood release. So if yours break, you got to get that rod lifted up and it'll release the hood. In this video, I'm going to be replacing the thermostat on this C70 Volvo. This is what uh, Volvo has as a P80 platform car, 850s, S and V70s. This probably applies to the 900 series cars as well. They have a thermostat housing up like this. It originally comes with these T40 in the housing. Those things are very tight over time and they're hard to get out. You don't want to strip them. This video will show you how to prevent that. And by all means, never, ever, ever, ever hit those things with the impact gun. If you do, it's going to crack the housing down under there. And then you're going to turn a one hour job into a six hour job. That's just something you don't want to do. And on top of that six hours, you're going to have to wait for a $90 housing that runs back there to the cylinder head to come in the mail. You don't want to do that. You can't buy those things locally unless you got a Volvo dealer close by. Then you'll probably pay 120 bucks for it. So, I'm going to show you how to get these T40s out of there without uh, destroying them. And if you do destroy one, you'll have to drill the head off of it. And once you lift the top of the thermostat housing up, if you had to drill the head off of one, the other part of the screw will screw out real easy with some pliers, needle nose vice grips, wire cutters, anything could screw it out once the head's off of it. So the problem is the head is real tight down against the housing. Anyway, let's get started in replacing this thermostat. You know your thermostat needs replacing whenever your car, one, doesn't heat up within two or three minutes of driving. And number two, if you're ever driving on the highway, the temperature needle dips down at all. This temperature needle should lock in when the car gets up to about 175 degrees. It should stay locked in at the three o'clock position, even up until around 238 degrees. Once the car begins to get over 238 degrees, Volvo no longer considers that normal operating temperature and your gauge will start rising. With this pressurized system, it's got the overflow tank reservoir. That system, actually, if you have a 50-50 mix coolant in there, it doesn't begin to overheat the engine to about 275. So. As long as your needle is straight at three o'clock position within a couple of minutes of you starting to drive all the way up until about 238 degrees, that needle will stay 
pegged at three o'clock. That's normal. If it ever dips down while you're driving, regardless of the outside temperature, uh, your thermostat is likely bad. And I'll show you a couple pictures. Some of these thermostats even come apart and are broken in pieces, like the one I did the other day. With the temperature of the car cool, you want to come under the front of the car, kind of in front of the driver's wheel, find the drain under the car. If you have this, this air guard here under the car, there should be a drain valve in that hole right there. You could put a little hose on it if you want, but if you open up that drain hole, fluid will drain right into a drain pan that you put under the car. It is 13 millimeter. It should not be very tight. So put a tool up there, open up that little valve, and let that begin to drain out. If your radiator was replaced with a type of radiator that doesn't have the Volvo style drain plug, which is, this one has the Volvo style drain plug. You may be able to see it in there. If it does not have the Volvo style drain plug, you'll need to remove this panel. It's got a 10 millimeter on the passenger side, 10 millimeter on the driver's side. You pull those down, remove those 10 millimeter screws, and then you can drop this air guide. Let me show you where that 10 millimeter is on this driver's side. It is up there, 10 millimeter. The cleft notes on this job, especially if it has these T40s in there, is you want to drain about a gallon of the coolant out. That'll get the level out of the bottle and below your thermostat housing. So when you take the thermostat housing off, you don't lose coolant. You catch that coolant in a clean pan. You close off your drain from your radiator. You get the thermostat housing apart and then you replace the thermostat with a Volvo thermostat. You put that housing back together. You fill your coolant system back up and that's it. Really not a big deal unless you strip one of these screws. So we're gonna do our best to avoid that. After I have all my tools and equipment needed, I'm gonna go ahead and drain the coolant out. I got a pan that I cleaned out. I may put a 13 millimeter socket on that drain in there and drain about a gallon of the coolant out into this pan. While it's draining, I'm gonna open up the reservoir cap. That's gonna speed up the flow of the coolant out of that radiator drain. The drain in the bottom of this radiator is not a drain that tightens, it's a drain that offsets. So it shouldn't be tight, very loose. Once you get it to start draining out of the drain, you can like I said, open up the reservoir. Something is strange about the way this, this air guide is aligned. It's normally easier to get on this drain. Anyway, I'm turning the drain out and there's the coolant coming out. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the reservoir cap and you'll see that flow out a little faster. Open up the reservoir cap. You do not wanna do this with the car hot you rather do it with the car cold. With the reservoir cap open, the coolant drains out a little faster. Let me grab my tool out of there so that it don't get doused. Once I get about a gallon out, I'm gonna stick that 13 back up there and screw it in hand tight. Doesn't need to be any tighter than that. If your car has an RN engine, which is like 99 or newer, has a front timing cover like this with the clips on the side. You do want to remove this timing cover to T30s and get this out of the way because that's going to prevent you from hitting that screw in the back at the proper angle. Again, you don't want to strip that screw. So let me get a T30, remove these two, take this cover off by pulling this clip out and it went out back there and setting this aside. Lift that timing belt cover up, set it out of the way, and you can see straight down on these T40s. If you got the 850 or the one that's before this RN engine, you can get down on that screw straight enough, even with fuel lines here. Don't let that deter you. Next thing we're gonna do is pull the screws out. I'm gonna use this T40 bit 
this extension and my ratchet wrench to get down over top of that thing and break that loose. This normally works for me on this front one. Just make sure you're set all the way down in there good. Oop, that's the wrong bit. I gotta get the right bit. If I strip that, I'm gonna be messed up. So, not the T30, but the T40. Make sure that bit is set down in there real good. Lean over top of it with your body. Take your other hand. Turn this thing uh, counterclockwise to break it loose. I can't do it holding the phone so let me see if I can set the phone here and you can watch lean down on it ah that one came loose good to go with that one the second one is tough what I use is a Allen that I get from Home Depot I get a set of these Huskies they come from like a T50 all the way down to T10 I put them over top of there, making sure that thing is set all the way down in that bit. Next, I get a cheater to break that loose. Let me show you what I use for a cheater. Any cheater would use. I have used open boxed in wrenches, slid them over there. I'll show you how that works, and then I'll show you what I like to use with it. Now, usually, this bit is not long enough to get down on there straight, and the shoulder of this bit puts you on an angle now this is actually fine on this c70 i could pop that loose with that but in case you got an 850 or something and you having reach problems i'm gonna show you how to use this let me grab the tools with that allen bit in there like that you could take a boxed in wrench you could slide it over the end of that allen and then start to twist it so that that is like that that's what I call cheater. You do it that way, or you could do it this way, is what I've developed and liked even more than that. I'll take an eight or a 10 millimeter socket, slide it over the end of that. Now I have a handle out here. And if you got a longer extension, heck, use a longer one. The longer extension you have, the better leverage you have. So I take this 10 millimeter socket I put it on an extension and now I have the ultimate tool for breaking this loose if I can't get down on it with that bit let me go ahead and break this loose and uh, I lean on it a little bit make sure I've got this thing deeply planted in that screw head this thing is tight <clears throat> I'm gonna need two hands try this again Ah, came loose. I used to have a speed handle, smack that thing loose. Very few people have speed handles. Now I got both screws loose. Go ahead and remove these two screws. Try not to drop them down in the engine bay. I got both of the screws out. I moved this up out of the way. And what I noticed immediately was the thermostat actually stuck in the housing. And this thermostat, somebody put in here, is the wrong type of thermostat. It's what you call a fail-safe thermostat. They commonly sell these at places like AutoZone and stuff. This thermostat, if you look at it, is actually locked open. You can see my finger wiggling up there. That's because this tried to overheat the engine because it's actually the wrong size. It's too tall for the car i got it set in there the bottom of it is hitting the bottom of the housing and it's still rocking around in here i've posted warnings about this thermostat that they're giving people at the auto parts store but everybody's not listening so this one is fail safe open it's the wrong type of thermostat let me go get the one that i use and put in there Yep, you got it. This is a Volvo thermostat. It's just not worth putting anything else in here. That's the wrong size. It's trying to overheat your car, stuff like that. A couple things I like about this thermostat. One is Volvo design. Two, it has a jiggle pin in it. See that little pin there? That jiggle pin allows this system to bleed and burp better. Has a jiggle pin. That jiggle pin is supposed to be installed pointing toward that bolt toward the driver's seat 
they call that one o'clock position in the manual. Also, it has the date it was manufactured, the eighth month, 2019. Also, it has a temperature that it opens up at 190 degrees. And it comes with the gasket. Get it from Volvo, they're 32 bucks. Get it from some other place, FCP, IPD, places like that, they're probably 24 bucks. But you just simply put this gasket around it and drop that thing in there. Let me show you how much smaller this is than the one that was in there when I get this gasket on. That's the Volvo one that comes with the car. This is the one that was installed in the car. That's how much larger this one is. Over a quarter of an inch larger. Then it doesn't have the jiggle pin and it doesn't have the thing on top. Let me get another profile so it'll be easier for you guys to see this. There it is. The Volvo one on the right, the one that was installed on the left. Please don't get aftermarket ones. Uh, there's a couple that do uh, mirror this Volvo style, but make sure it has a jiggle pin and it's not too tall. I can measure it, but I'm not going to. Just get one that falls all the way in there. So when I drop this in the housing, boom, it falls all the way in. The gasket is there. You don't have to put any gasket maker or anything in there. Point the jiggle pin toward the bolt. You're good to go. This thing will burp easy. It's not too large. Open up at the right temperature. These things last, I've seen them 15 years, uh, probably every 10 years or whenever you have indication on your cluster that it's staying open. They are safe. I've never heard of one of these thermostats uh, breaking or malfunctioning and keeping the system closed and causing the system to overheat. Never heard of that, not once. I want to put my thermostat housing back on. You want to check the housing, make sure it didn't have any coolant buildup residue. I feel a little bit there, so I'm going to clean that off and I'm going to clean this off. I'm going to brush this with a wire brush to make sure those surfaces are clean. But really, this is going to sit down on that gasket and seal that off. Not a too big of a deal to have the outside of this clean. So let me grab a wire brush and clean it off a little bit. Do not use scotch bright pads. You do not want that material inside your engine coolant system wearing out your engine. Normally use a good quality brass brush. It's a similar hardness as the aluminum. It won't damage the surfaces. So just brush those clean. Drop your thermostat back in. And then install new bolts. I don't usually go back with these bolts here. You can, no big deal. But I like to use 10 millimeter bolts that I get from water pump jobs. So that's what I'm going to put back in here. There's less likely of a chance of somebody stripping one of those. You don't have to torque these down real tight. Probably 14 foot-pounds, maybe even 13. Not super tight. That seal will keep this thing sealed closed. No RTV, nothing like that. I got that brush clean. I'm going to go ahead and drop the thermostat in here. Turn it to the proper Volvo recommended position. Wipe the thermostat off and the housing off with a rag set it down over there and put in your screws here are some water pump bolts old and new style I'm gonna post the size of the bolts in the thread pitch in the comment section doesn't matter if they have a shank or not because the bottom goes all the way through out to the atmosphere as long as the bolt shank is not thicker than your housing there you see when the head of that bolt sits down into that housing there's still threads that will be up in the housing so use either or you only need about four or five threads to stick through the housing to catch that thing so that bolt is fine as well that's enough to keep that thermostat housing down and won't cause any problems either bolts fine now you could clean this thread sealer off of them if you want it's not necessary but uh, I don't think it hurts anything so I'm gonna go ahead and screw this down screws in place you want to really start them in by hand because you want to make sure the threads catch so you don't strip them 
And by hand, I mean not with a machine. Don't tighten these things down with a machine. Put your tool on there, get it started. I'm going to get the back one started, and then I'm going to tighten them down. Really, no more than snug. That'll close the seal and seal it off. These are not lug nuts. Don't torque them down too tight. Tighten them up tight enough to crush the seal. Like I said, in between 10 and 15 foot-pounds is more than enough. Both screws are tight. Now I can put the timing belt cover back on the uh, RN style engines. Hook that in there. Work that thing down. Clip both front and back in. And then put those two T30s in there. These screws are just a dust cover. Don't torque those down. Just snug them down. Now I'm going to go under it. Make sure that the screw under here is still, I guess, tight. I tightened it by hand. I came down here while it was draining. And I just want to run this up. It stops leaking before it gets all the way up. But I want to run it up until it's snug against the bottom of the radiator. I do not want to tighten that with a tool, really. Because I don't want to break it or strip that hole out. It's all plastic on plastic. If you do touch it with the tool, just touch it until it stops turning. Don't tighten it. I could take the little bit of coolant that I caught, pour it back in the reservoir, and then put the reservoir cap on it. For some reason, you drain so much out that you can't get it all back in. Uh, drive the car around the block. When you come back from driving it and the temperature's up, you should be able to ease that cap off very slow, pour the rest of it in. If not, just let it sit a few hours, and by that time, it'll burp. You could pour the rest in, and you're good to go. You do not need to burp these things three or four times. Because of the jiggle pin and the way the system is designed, it'll normally burp once, and you're good to go. All of the coolant I had went back in the bottle. I'm good to go. And that's it. So let me... Start the car, make sure I don't have anything leaking. I could see there that that's not leaking. I could look under the car, see that that uh, radiator drain is not leaking. Good to go. Take the car for a ride, make sure your temperature heats up nice and quick, and you'll be done. If for some reason you stripped one of those bolts, there's a video linked in the comments below that show you how to drill and get that out of there. So. Hopefully you didn't. Let's continue. If for some reason somebody hit that thing with an impact and busted it, you need to contact somebody to get the proper housing to fit your thermostat. Normally the bottom piece is pretty much the same for all of the 850s, S and V 70s, uh, up to 2000, and then the and then the C 70s up to 2004. Part number for the thermostat is in the comments. The part number for the housing bottom is in the comments. If you order a whole housing, you could use the bottom part. But if you order a whole housing and you're going to use the top too, make sure you have the top that has a weep hole on top that goes to the bottom. Or like this, it doesn't have that weep hole. So make sure you order the proper one. Tools and equipment you need. Drain pan funnel rags glove volvo thermostat this is for a cheater if you want to use that extensions and the 10 millimeter for a cheater if you want to move, use that uh, t40 t30 13 millimeter and a ratchet wrench if you have a different style radiator uh, drain plug you'll need a flat tip screwdriver and or pair of pliers and then you'll need a 10 millimeter like this to get that air guard off of there if you have to remove that so that should be everything you need unless you strip one of those bolts it's good idea to have two 10 millimeter bolts on hand i use old water pump bolts but if you want to use some from the hardware store the size is in the comments and if you strip one of them bolts you'll need a drill and a drill bit that video is linked in the comments as well in this video we're going to be removing and replacing this upper torque arm bushing from this 2001 c70 as you can see that one is torn pretty bad 
it's on its last leg. It's almost torn totally through. So I ordered one of those. Straightening easy. You want to take the cover off because a couple bolts or one bolt is under the cover. Then you take that bolt out the middle, take those four bolts off of the mount, lift it up, move it out of the way, set the new one in place, reverse the bolts. Uh, 14 millimeter going there, T30 is going here, 15 and the 13 going there. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is remove the engine cover. I got to remove all, uh, looks like eight of those T30s, take that cover out of the way because I got access to this 14 millimeter bolt right there. Next, I put the 13 on this side, 15 on this side, break that loose and remove that bolt. Now I'm gonna break these four bolts loose and I do need an extension to get that one there out of the way. But since you got this bolt out, it's easy to get to that one. Because this one down here doesn't have a lot of clearance, I use this, put it back over here, got it over the top of the nut and pull it this way to break it loose. Don't try to get it from this side. You don't want to bust your uh, reservoir there. So let me go ahead and pull these four long bolts out, keeping them in order because they're different sizes, and slide that mount out and put the new one in. Two long ones on the passenger side, two shorter ones on the driver's side. Lift them out up and out of there. This one was not totally destroyed, but it was getting close. This is the brand I think is OEM. So this is what we're going back with. Sounds like it's got hardware in there with it. Let's check it out. No hardware, just a different style. A little bit different. So I'm going back in with this one. This mount they sent me scrapes the bracket right there. So I'm going to grab a pair of pliers or wrench and bend that out right there and right there. And then the rest of it's fine. Here's the tools you need. 14 millimeter, 15 millimeter, 13 millimeters. 15 millimeters should be deep. Ratchet wrenches. I use that as a pry bar to pry the whole engine forward to get the mount bolt to line up. T30 and ratchet wrench, of course. Them out. Looking at a 92 Toyota Camry, he's having overheating issues. The six cylinder engine is incredible, it's a very strong engine, mm -hmm. and it's also used in the Lexus. The thing is, you got a radiator cap here, radiator cap here. Whenever you have a coolant issue, when you do water pumps or anything like that, you got to fill this and that mm -hmm. up to the tip top, mm -hmm. then put fluid in your reservoir, mm -hmm. then let it idle for 20 minutes or so, then shut it down, then let it cool down 15, 20 minutes, and then check, make sure that stuff is still full because it, it could need to be burped. Now, the, the tricky thing about this engine is a lot of mechanics don't know it, is this engine has the lower radiator hose there, the upper radiator hose here, and there's heater hoses and stuff over the other side. Yep. There's a crossover hose under all of this stuff, under this intake manifold, and it goes down back behind here, and sometimes that hose down there leaks. And when it leaks, you gotta replace it. It's, $900 job at most mechanics that know about it, but you got to take a lot of stuff off It's at least four hours, maybe six. Yeah. I think you can do it in four But there's a crossover hose that goes from here to there when your system is full You start the car let it idle a little bit. You can normally look down on the driver's side under the car and see that uh, Coolant running down there if that hose is if bad hose is So if you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.